fangs, the angel ring doesn't double growth rates. You think the angel ring doubles growth <laughs> rates. The angel oh, ring doesn't double growth rates. The angel 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 ring doesn't double growth rates. Hello ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Mengs and I welcome you guys back to another episode of Let's Play Gaiden Abridged. I know it's been a while since the last one, but it is time to jump back on the Gaiden train, so let's get ready to- Hey Mengs, watch this video about- Oh hi there, random guy in the comment section, uh, nice of you to stop by. Uh, this is Gaiden Abridged, a very fast format Let's Play where- When are you going to do the Echoes post game? Alright, if you shut the fuck up for a moment, I'm going to explain to you what the video you're watching is. So this is Gaiden Abridged- Are you ever going to play Metopia? Are you just here to ask stupid questions or are you actually interested- Hey, did you know that the Angel Ring does not double growth rates? I wasn't aware. Thanks- thanks for the advice. No problem. Bye! Wait, wait, where are you going? Ah, uh, Gaiden's boring. I'm going to go watch Markijo's Rage Fest. <laughs> Alright, bitches, long have you waited. Echoes outdated, Shadow Dragon overrated, Gaiden activated. Uh, since last part was about Celica and her crew, it's now time to go check up on the Alm. And what is he doing, you might ask? Alright, this map. Well, I hope you fucking like Cavaliers, because we put Cavaliers on top of your Cavalier, so you can Cavalier while you Cavalier. How the fuck are we supposed to deal with this many fucking horse units at once? It's almost as if the game wants us to... Oh. Mm. <laughs> anyway, we get swamped on both sides, both the left and right hand one, and our armies also split in two. I decided to put Clive in front of the western flank, and uh, wow, would you look at that? Rare footage of Clive being useful here. This sure is a rare sight. With a bit of Excalibur help from Robin and some much needed off tanking by Foresight, the left flank crumbles faster than Brookwood's self confidence in the Echo's map counterpart. Oh, on the right hand flank, the cavalry is rolling in full force and quickly gets acquainted with Matilda's Night Killer. Sadly, she lacks the power to one round them, but that means they're low and nice to be picked off by other units. Matilda is such a considerate young woman. Meanwhile, the rest of the cavaliers gets the brilliant idea to try and gang up on our commander in chief, Alm. Oh boy, oh boy, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna be the hero for Gal, I'm gonna. Dead. Don't give up, guys, press the attack, keep focusing on their commander, he'll eventually. Dead. Damn you! I'm going to avenge my friend! Take this! Dead. I am, um... I'm, I'm, I'm gonna attack this, this armor knight over here. Yep, that's what I'm gonna do. Alm decides to challenge the enemy paladin general, Loso, to a duel, and the two of them go back and forth a bit. However, he proves to be no match for the Alm, and after a long fight, Lucas comes in to pick up the scraps. Over on the left flank, a lone paladin tries to retreat to the central fort to take shelter against the ongoing massacre. It seems he's about to get away due to his high movement, but luckily we got a long-legged guided missile named Claire who catches up to him. Yeah, that's my girl. Who's your good little Pegasus knight? Who's your good Pegasus knight? Anyway, if you remember a few episodes back, some random villager told us his girl was trapped in a nearby dungeon. I think I have a theory about where we might begin looking for her. Just a hunch, though. Hey, wait a minute. I remember this place from Echoes. It's the place with all the gargoyles in it. Don't mind me, guys. So I'ma just casually walk past you. <laughs> Suckers. Ah! <laughs> didn't, didn't mean that! Luckily, gargoyles are pretty much a joke. Sure, they may be a bit tanky with their high defenses, and they're also pretty fast, but usually they don't do all that much damage, so like, they're pretty easy to deal with, really. Let's just clear them up and... It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. Okay, oh my fuck, what the hell is going- Oh, Jesus Christ, these guys are really strong. Oh my god, what the hell? Oh shit, oh fuck, how the fuck am I supposed- oh, Claire, no! Oh shit, oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Right. Well, apparently gargoyles are pretty fucking dangerous in Gaiden. Who would have fucking thunk it? Let's try that again with a different tactic. Ladies and gentlemen, let me present to you the box formation. Yep, when Gaiden gives you no terrain to work with, you just have to create your own. Bulky units on the outside, squishy units on the inside. Let the enemy come to us. Slowly wear them down. 
Well, at least Gray is having a good time down here with his effective damage. I think this might be the first time he's ever useful. It's been fun! Alright, after a long and tedious battle, the gargoyles finally go down, and inside the dungeon we find the little lost blue girl. Wow, I was so scared! I really question why the gargoyles would even keep her alive to begin with. They sure didn't seem to have any problems murdering my sweet little Claire a few moments back. Again, I don't really get how these monsters operate, but maybe I'm not supposed to. Further inside the cave, we find the Mila Shrine as expected, and it's time for some promotions. Robin gets his promotion to Sage, meaning I now got another healer on my team, which is always pretty sweet, and yeah boy, Claire becomes the freaking Falcon Knight, the best freaking class in the entire game. Holy fucking shit, 20 hit points? That has to be the biggest boost in a single stat from a promotion ever. This shit makes Fire Emblem 6 warrior promo gains look weak. Either way, my lovely little Claire is all finally grown up, and... <laughs> That sounded pretty shady now that I think about it. Why don't I get someone to proofread these fucking lines? The creepy man will excuse himself now. Oh well, uh, yeah, anyway, we're we're about done here. Oh yeah, also Python becomes a sniper or whatever. Lastly, before we leave, we got two lion heads. One gives HP, the other one gives EXP. I'm not entirely sure how much experience you get from one use, but it seems to put your units up to 99, so you can't level up this way, sadly, unlike Echoes. I consider almost a whole level's worth of experience to be much more valuable than just a single hit Points, so I drop it on Python, Force, and Clear. Anyway, time to backtrack to the village and meet the blue girl again. Ehe, thanks for saving me. Seriously, this girl has the best lines ever. As a reward, we get another holy sword. You know all about those by now, right? It's a sweet reward, but the problem is, Om is the only one in my entire party who wields swords, and he's already wielding the Regalian dick stick, so that's not an option. Everyone else is either a lance user, an archer, or a magic unit, and since I've run out of merchants, this sword is about as useful as the armor crush combat arts in Echoes. Or we could use the armor crush to kill. No, we can't even kill this guy. Hey, Mangsh, did you know that you can trade items freely on easy mode? Thanks. Weren't you gonna go watch Rage Fests? Anyway, enough village time, let's head out. We got a floodgate to, um, flood. So the next chapter features Gazelle. <laughs> Seriously, Gaiden, these portraits are killing me. Anyway, uh, another boss that they decided to slap a face on for a reason. This battle is annoying with a capital A. Enemy team composition, a bow knight, some snipers, a fuck ton of archers, and of course, everyone's favorite witches. And unlike Echoes, where at least get to look at some thick booty when they attack, these are completely useless. All they do is teleport behind you. Nothing personnel, kid. Actually, on further note, there's something incredibly weird about these witches. They simply refuse to teleport for whatever reason. I even restarted the map to see if they did it again, but no, they still prefer moving which is rather strange. Anyway, when every single enemy unit is arranged, which is the case here, you got about two options. You can either charge everyone in and hope to god you don't die before they do, or you can send a single well-trained bow unit in to retaliate against the incoming storm of arrows and lightning bolts. Yeah, I, I, th I think the answer is pretty obvious. Ironically enough, the battle goes pretty well, and Grace actually want to finish off the boss, and upon doing so, even earns himself an easy promotion to Bow Knight. Sadly, the only Mila statue available at the moment is hidden behind a wall of gargoyles, so fuck if I'm going in there again. Sorry, Grey, you're gonna have to wait a bit to get your horse. Alright, time for the Floodgate map. I really love this map in Echoes. It was so cool, you had to keep Delphi alive, but not kill her, but at the same time bring her low enough so she couldn't use her aura spell. You had to carefully make your way through the hallway where the dark mages blasted you from all sides. Not to mention the boss was actually really tough. Oh. Yeah, yeah I get why they nerfed warp now. So yeah, that final battle sure was anticlimactic as fuck, but if there's one thing I've learned to expect from Gaiden, it's to expect the unexpected. You see, Gaiden's simply gonna fuck you in the ass when you least expect it, and let you off easy when you think it won't. Seriously, this game really throws you off the sand. A random encounter against 10 gargoyles was tougher than the final boss of Act 2. Or anything else I faced up until this point, for that matter. Oh well. So inside the Floodgate, we get to speak to Dute, also known as Delphia in Echoes. Eh, Dute's kind of a cute sounding name, actually. I, I I prefer that one, to be honest. Anyway, she's sorry for being mind-controlled and decides to join our group. Now, Dute's actually pretty fucking good. She may be at a low level and pretty far away from her promotion, but her bases are insane by Gaiden standards, and her growth rate's even more fucking so. This is everything Nino and Sophia should have been, in my opinion. Dute comes with the Aura spell, one of the hardest hitting spells in the game. She will also be able to pick up the Angel spell at level 11, as well as Ragnarok at level 16, though you want to be careful with that spell in Gaiden. Uh, she has a glaring weakness though, and that's the fact that she never learns Excalibur, which I find to be the best damaging spell in the game with its sky-high accuracy and crit rates. Aura is not to be frowned upon, 13 might is no joke, just be careful with its steep hit points cost of 6 and weight of 10, so you might be better off using fire for the most part, it will get the job done. 
The guy at the floodgate tells us that the only way to pass is to open the floodgate on the other side of the continent, because reasons. Well, I guess we're stuck here until Celica decides to get her ass in gear then. While we wait, let's take a trip down to the Mila statue to promote Grey and Cliff. Grey finally gets his horse and Cliff gets his golden horse. Bling bling, nigga. Alright, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is it for this episode of Gaiden Abrage. Join us next time as we... <laughs> <laughs> Not this map. Not this map. <laughs>Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, do remember to slap a like and a comment on it. I'd also really like to give a huge thanks to my lovely Patreon supporters. You guys are the best, and I really love each and every one of you. You guys are literally the reason I can keep doing this full-time, as YouTube is going full retard with the apocalypse and demonetizing videos left, right, and center for seemingly no reason at all. Seriously, they demonetized my freaking cabbage video. No joke. So if you want to help me out, just a dollar per month is really appreciated and goes a long way when enough of you contribute. I really want to finish this entire LP and more support on my Patreon means I won't have to worry about spending all those hours on this extremely time-consuming project. Because at the end of the day, these are actually the videos that I love doing the most. I'll try my hardest to get part 8 out soon and it won't be four months until the next one, I promise. Have a wonderful night everyone and take care. I love you all. <laughs> you guys, the Adrian ring does a double gro gro uh, ba 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 bangs, ba bangs. No, oh no, did I miss it? No, I've been waiting four months to tell him bangs. <laughs>